Hello, my name is Logan and I'm your host, The Mighty Pirate. In today's video, we are going to discuss the Urban Mech. My sources for today's video are Technical Readout 3039, Technical Readout 3025, Technical Readout 3085, and finally Sarna.net. The Urban Mech was designed for just what its name suggests, Urban Combat and Defense. This was achieved by starting with a cheap, easily produced chassis giving it six tons of armor to rival protection found on many medium weight battle mechs and mounting a pair of jump jets for jumping distance of 60 meters. The trade-off was it can only mount a miserable 60 rating engine, making the urban mech the slowest light mech in existence with a cruising speed of 21 kilometers and a top speed of 32.4 kilometers. This severe this was a severe disadvantage if the mech attempted to fight in open country, something for only the foolish or desperate, but offset by the fact that fighting in the close confines of a Star League city left little room to maneuver anyways, the urban mech's low profile made it difficult to target. Thus, the mech was primarily used for fighting gorillas and other light mechs in an urban environment, an arena where it also achieved some success fighting medium mechs and even heavy mechs. Standard tactics for an urban mech lance was to split up into its constitute parts and occupy various buildings in order to snipe the enemy force but falling back to the next defensive line. Large numbers of urban mechs were produced by Orgus Industries from 2675 until the destruction of their assembly lines. Urban mechs were also produced up through the mid-3081 at the Belatkes facility. As such, urban mechs could be found in all armies of the successor states. However, most military leaders saw the slow little mech as a liability, confining their stockpiles to garrison duty or stripping them of their parts. This dismissive attitude towards the urban mech saved it from the ravages of the succession wars and ensured its continued use through the 31st century. The Capilane Confederation remained the largest and only user of urban mechs to actually deploy them for frontline duty, a result of the devastation of the Four Succession War and their desperation for any mech to replenish their losses. The Confederation Reserve Cavalry and the Capilane Defense Force had the lion's share of urban mechs. Outside of the Confederation, the Federated Sons fielded the largest number of urban mechs thanks to the fact it was composed of captured Capilane equipment. Its prominence within the Confederation meant the urban mech was among the mechs within the force to receive upgrades following the recovery of lost tech. The other states followed suit with much less priority over improving other mechs, despite the sheer cost necessary to replace the urban mech's engine and increase its top speed meant even the Confederation limited their refit packages to improving the weapons and armor only. The urban mech packs a powerful punch for its size. The standard version carries an autocannon ten in its right arm, and as a backup weapon, it carries a small laser in the left arm for suppressing infantry. These two weapons can constantly harass, or if piloted by an experienced enough mech warrior, down mechs up to twice its size. A single ton of ammo located in the right torso leaves little endurance for a prolonged fight. Though it fits perfectly with the hit and run nature of the mech, one way or another, most observers agree the urban mech is good for about two minutes of combat. That will conclude my video on the urban mech. Thanks for watching guys. I know the urban mech isn't exactly the most exciting of mechs, but I think it has a big importance for the Battletech universe. I think it's a story of a little mech taking on a mech three times its size. I'm a big fan of it, and I hope that you guys enjoy this video and watch the next one.